Hello and welcome to the 49ers First and 10 podcast. 10 minutes of the most up-to-date 49ers news first thing in the morning. I'm your host, Brianna McDonald, and I'm joined by 49ers team reporter, Lindsay Polares, and special guest, Matt Mayoko from NBC Sports Bay Area. Matt, for, thanks for joining the podcast again. Always my pleasure. I, I keep, I'm, I'm kind of like overwhelmed because I think that every time I'm on, it's like they'll never ask me back, but you do. <laughs> so I'm thrilled. I'm honored. I'm privileged. Matt, you're a repeat. Great. You're a repeat guest. <laughs> Absolutely. So before we dive into this highly anticipated 49ers-Eagles game, we wanted to give some love to a few 49ers alumni. Ricky Waters, Anquan Bolden, and Patrick Willis have been named semifinalists for the 2024 Pro Football Hall of Fame class. Matt, you've been covering the team for quite a while now. Can you talk about how big of an honor this is for the former players? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's you know, for the semifinalist round, that's 25 individuals who made it through the preliminary process. So this year is 173 nominees. And to get to the semifinalist round is, is really difficult to do. And then the next step is to make it to the final 15. And Patrick Willis, I think we'll make it through uh, for the third consecutive year. Um, we'll see with Ricky Waters and with Anquan Bolden. But I, I do think that Patrick Willis is probably the next in line of the 49ers to get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, which every year only five, a maximum of five modern era people can, can make it through. So it's so difficult to make it in. And, you know, my experience has been, you know, 49er fans will always say, what about this guy? He should be in. And Patrick Willis should be in. But I can guarantee you that 31 other teams have their people that they're pushing to and they think that they should be in. But I do think Patrick Willis is getting closer and closer to knocking that door down. So hopefully in January or actually in uh, it's during the honors show, the Thursday before the Super Bowl, hopefully there will be some good news for Patrick Willis. Yep, definitely. Just like Matt said, the next step in the process is the cut down to 15 finalists. And then we'll hear about the Hall of Fame class, which will be announced on February 8th during the NFL Honors Ceremony. So now on to Sunday's contest. We got to hear from Kyle Shanahan yesterday. Lindsay, what did the head coach have to say about the team's mindset heading into this week? Yeah, despite the outside noise, because there's certainly a lot of it, especially with this being the NFC title game rematch and the injury to Brock Purdy outside the building, the noise is very, very loud. Uh, but really, Kyle Shanahan just reiterated the point of one game at a time. It's not just coach speak. It's just about making sure that no one game gets too big. And really, it is one to know every week because the 49ers have a lot at stake. They're currently sitting in that number two position in the NFC. Every win matters for them at this point. Obviously, there is a lot of recent history between these two teams and the motivation to win is always there. But I try not to let the moment get too big because it's just a road game and there's still another very tough test that's coming up in week 14 with division rival, the Seattle Seahawks. We're in the middle of a Seattle Seahawks sandwich. So lots to look forward to the 40, for the 49ers still in this late part of the season. Well, in Philadelphia, it's going to be a lot colder and more wet conditions. So how's Coach Shanahan feeling about his quarterback, Brock Purdy, playing in an environment like that? Yeah, he mentioned just a lot of confidence in Brock Purdy. And I think, you know, kind of a good primer for what's coming up potentially weather-wise in week week 13 now uh, is what the 49ers saw in Cleveland uh, during week six. And it wasn't statistically Brock Purdy's best game, but the experience of just dealing with light showers and the conditions, the ball conditions that kind of come with that are a really big deal. Also, Kyle Shanahan mentioned that Brock Purdy did play four years in Iowa, which came with a lot more than just rain. You know, think snowstorms, think very, very cold weather. So he does have a lot of past experience from the college level to lean on. Um, And Brock Purdy spoke today, too. And just knowing that that's on the forecast allows him to kind of plan for it, whether he will or will not need a glove. It kind of depends on the severity of the rainfall. So he said if it's just light rain, he probably won't go with the glove. But if it's coming down any sort of monsoon condition, then that's something he might opt for. All right. Well, speaking of the quarterback performance, Matt, on 49ers Talk, you shared that even though 
Brock Purdy and Jalen Hurts aren't necessarily facing each other on the field, that that is one of the biggest matchups you're watching in this contest. So can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think Jalen Hurts uh, rightfully has put his himself, his name at the top, his performance has put his name at the top of the list when it comes to NFL MVP, uh, you know, the candidacy. Last year, he finished second in that. And I think Brock Purdy is being overlooked a little bit. I, I know that when you think of the Eagles, you think of Jalen Hurts. And yeah, they have some really good wide receivers and everything else. But I think when you look at the 49ers, you know, it's kind of Brock Purdy and Christian McCaffrey kind of sharing the top billing. And they're both top 10 candidates uh, for the NFL MVP. But I think what we've seen from Brock Purdy almost every week, and it seems like he's played against number one overall picks a lot this season. And by and large, he's outperformed those guys on a weekly basis. In fact, I mean, I would say since Brock Purdy took over as the 49ers starting quarterback, probably the only two times where you could actually look at it and say, oh, that quarterback outperformed Brock Purdy were the games this season against Kirk Cousins and the Vikings and Joe Burrow and the Bengals. So I think with all eyes in the NFL on this game, everybody really knows Jalen Hurts. And I think everybody is I don't know, sleeping on Brock Purdy, or they just don't give him the, the credit that he deserves. And I think a lot of that has to do with how he entered the NFL. I think this is a, a big game. Um, you know, it, it's not as important as just who wins it. But if Brock Purdy has a Brock Purdy type of game, in other words, the kind of game that we've all seen him have time and time again, then I think he vaults right up there at the top of the list for MVP recognition. So that's why I think it's kind of a kind of a game within the game of just kind of looking at the quarterbacks and, you know, which quarterback makes the plays to win the game and who knows which quarterback might make the play to not put his team in the best position to win. All right. Well, now two position groups that will go head to head on Sunday are Philadelphia's elite offensive line and San Francisco's revamped defensive line that now includes a former Eagle, Javon Hargrave. Can you explain why this game is going to be about the battle in the trenches and how Hargrave's familiarity with the Eagles could help out the Niners in this one? Yeah, I think I think you know both of those. You know, the the whenever the Forty Niners have the ball, whenever the Eagles have the ball, that 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 competition you know, at the line of scrimmage is going to be key. But specifically, I think last year it was very clear. The Eagles had the best defensive line in all of football. So what do the 49ers do in the offseason? They pinpoint Javon Hargrave. Let's let's take away Javon Hargrave from the best defensive line in football and put him on the 49ers. And now let's retally. Not only that, and then the 49ers bring in Chase Young, middle of the season and you know the rich have gotten richer so i think that's that matchup the eagles offensive line widely considered one of the if not the top offensive line in all of football against the 49ers defensive line where now i mean look at this on those money downs you have nick bosa and chase young coming off the edge you have uh, Eric Armstead and Javon Hargrave in the middle pushing the pocket. And now you have a heavyweight matchup within this heavyweight matchup. All right. And against the Seahawks, cornerback Trevorius Ward was assigned to cover DK Metcalf and was praised for his performance in that game. Lindsay, what do you think his assignment is going to look like this week? You know, I think the effectiveness of Trevorius Ward cannot be understated in this one he held dk metcalf top wide receiver for the seahawks to just three catches 32 yards just an absolutely tremendous performance by Trevarius ward and this week we obviously don't know because we don't have the game plan but he could very well draw a similar assignment either covering aj brown or Devonte smith the Eagles' top two offensive weapons, um, specifically with A.J. Brown. He's had a lot of success against man coverage, so certainly going to be a tough test. But it's something that we heard defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes say that Ward has really worked up to throughout the season, has been very willing and eager. So certainly an assignment that if he does draw it will be uh, very welcomed, I, I would assume. And finally, since it's our Friday episode, it's time for some bold predictions. So, Matt, what's your hot take for this game? 
my hot take for this game. I, you know what? I'm just going to kind of repeat what we talked about. My hot take for this game is that Brock Purdy becomes at the tip of everyone's tongue after this game as far as MVP candidacy in the, in the NFL. All right. That's a, that's a hot take for sure. And Lindsay, your bold prediction for this Sunday. I don't know if it's that bold, but maybe just because of how effective the Eagles offensive line has been. But, you know, I'm going to go with another five sacks for the 49ers D line. Let's just keep the trend going. I I like how it's been going. (laughs) We'll just have to see. So faithful, tune into the game. The week 13 matchup is set to kick off at 125 p.m. Pacific time this Sunday on Fox. But that will do it for today. Thank you so much, Lindsay and Matt, for joining me in this update. Don't forget to follow First and 10 on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Turn on the notifications so you're in the know when we post any breaking news updates. And thank you, Faithful, for tuning in.